In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and morning was the first day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. To govern the day and the night. And to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. Timothy Thedford, aka J Electronica, was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, in September of 1976. He grew up in the notorious Magnolia Housing Projects in New Orleans. There's a reason why the housing project used to be referred to as the Wild Magnolia with all the killings, drugs, and overall poor conditions people were living in. Despite the reputation the Magnolia Projects had, the area spawned many different musicians such as Soldier Slim, Magnolia Shorty, Turk, and Juvenile. J. Electronica's family had lived in the Magnolia Projects since the 1940s, and one of his earliest memories as a child was tagging along with his mother to a neighborhood bookstore. The book that had the most impact on him as a child would be the Bible. In an interview, J. Electronica said, I grew up in the Baptist church. It's New Orleans, it's the South. My mom would ask me, what does this scripture mean? I didn't look at it as boring. A lot of times it scared me. For a long portion of my childhood, I was afraid at night. It wasn't the boogeyman, it was like the devil, that kind of stuff. Religion had me scared. At the age of 10, J. Electronica started rapping. He was inspired by LL Cool J's song, I Can't Live Without My Radio. When Jay got to high school, he got involved with sports, but then gravitated to the band, bouncing from color guard to baritone horn to tuba on the legendary St. Augustine High School Marching 100. After graduating high school, Jay briefly attended Northwestern State in Louisiana for a semester before dropping out. After dropping out, Jay returned home and started working at a cafe. This job ended abruptly when he decided to quit to attend the 1995 Million Man March in Washington, D.C. After attending the march, he returned to New Orleans once again, but this time he received terrible news. One of his close friends tragically got killed. 
At the beginning of 1996, J Electronica left home once again, but this time it was to seriously pursue a rap career in New York. This dream got halted due to him getting off of the bus in Atlanta, Georgia, due to there being a lot of now hiring signs because of the 1996 Summer Olympics, which were held in Atlanta. Jay landed a job in the kitchen at Morris Brown College, but it did not pay enough to cover his rent. In an interview, Jay said that at the time, there was not a Covenant house in Atlanta, so he ended up homeless. Since there was not a Covenant house, Jay Electronica lived in a shelter instead. Though he stayed at the shelter, sometimes he missed the 7 p.m. curfew, which caused him to sleep in parks or at a train station some nights. While Jay was in Atlanta, he accepted the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad was once a religious leader who led the Nation of Islam from 1934 until his passing in 1975. If you have ever listened to Jay Electronica's music before, then you're probably well aware that he's made countless references to the Nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad, Farrakhan, who he even ended up tatting on his face a couple years ago, the 5% Nation, the Quran, and things of that nature. After being in Atlanta, Jay bounced around to various different places. He spent time in New York, Denver, Dallas, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, and Philadelphia. As to those who are wondering how he got the name J Electronica, he would adopt the alias while living in Baltimore around 2000. In an interview, Jay said that he chose the moniker because it sounded like a female superhero and he felt hip hop was too macho at the time. Speaking of the year 2000, some people might not know that J Electronica released a project this year. A long time ago, I made a video talking about this specific project because it's very important to the backstory of J Electronica. He only has a few official projects and most fans don't even know that his first project that we know of dates back to 2000. The story behind this project is that in 2018, the internet discovered a J Electronica project from 2000 called The Awakening. This project was before he became J Electronica. He went by the name Jari Allah instead. Ladies fill us all and they do the rest. You the best, ludicrous. You knew to this. My click more hungry than Budapest. Plus your half ass rap, son, is foolishness. This is obviously J Electronica, and you can see the potential that he had at the time. I'm not a huge fan of the beats on this project, but this isn't the only project that J Electronica released back in the day. While in Detroit, J Electronica befriended associates of the late Jay Dilla and began working closely and collaborating with people like Mr. Porter. The second secret project, War With The Dragon, is a collection of 10 songs that J Electronica recorded over the winter of 2002 and the spring of 2003. Once it was completed, J Electronica drove from Detroit, Michigan to New York City, New York to put it in Diddy's hands. Yes, Diddy, the founder of Bad Boy Records. J Electronica was determined to get signed to his label and mentioned him multiple times throughout the project. My favorite song from War With The Dragon has to be the song, I'm A Bad Boy. I owe you one, Diddy. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Who rock moves that soon? I pay dues and stay smooth, never lose. I move, how I choose. They wanna creep the kid and give me the blues, right? While in New York, J Electronica started hustling his CDs outside the bad boy offices until he managed to get a meeting at the label. Jay waited hours for his meeting, but unfortunately, or fortunately, if you look at it, hashtag no diddy, the meeting never happened. This happened as a result of the filming of the hit TV show, Making the Band. Filming for the show took way longer than expected, so Jay was told that he was going to have to schedule another meeting. After being told this, nothing ever really materialized again and it was back to the drawing board for Jay Electronica. 
Now, this part of the story I'm about to get into is actually rather funny and interesting. I read an article on DJ Booth talking about how Jay Electronica allegedly created a website and made a fake press release stating that he signed with Bad Boy Records. The DJ Booth article pretty much confirms that it was actually Jay who did this, which makes it even funnier. But the things that Jay allegedly said on the website are hilarious. One of the titles for an article is Diddy Signs a Heavyweight. This came out in May of 2004. The article then says Biggie was murdered, Mace found God, Shine got locked up, and Diddy had been making wine out of water with the likes of Loon and Taban. <laughs> Later on in the article, it says that Jay Electronica is going to put Bad Boy back where it belongs everywhere like <laughs> yeah <laughs> then it says that jay electronica is going to be the next voice of hip-hop at the end of the article it mentions a 20 track project titled lock stock in one smoking barrel this is an obvious reference to the 1998 movie lock stock in two smoking barrels fans of jay electronica know that he's a huge movie buff which doesn't help his case of this not being him who wrote the article but the article states that the source magazine reviewed it and felt like they had another five mic album on their hands some of those watching this video already know how important the Source Magazine's mic ratings for an album used to be. A five mic album meant that your album was an instant cop certified classic. But like I said, this is Cap and Jay Electronica never signed to Bad Boy. What is true is that he was on Unsigned Hype in the Source back in 2004. Unsigned Hype was a column in the Source magazine that gave a spotlight to artists who were not signed yet. Now, I can't really find a whole bunch of information on Jay Electronica from 2005 and 2006, but in 2007, Jay Electronica released two projects. One was Star Wars, and the other one was Act 1, Eternal Sunshine, The Pledge. We'll start off with Star Wars, and this is an obvious nod to the legendary Star Wars franchise. Jay Alec is a huge Star Wars fan and has referenced it a lot in his music. The cover art for the project is Darth Vader holding a mic. Star Wars has several beats from the legendary producer Jay Dilla, who sadly passed away a year before the release of the project in 2006. Renaissance Man, My World, Na Salute, and Damo Tryptamine are all exceptional tracks from Star Wars. By far, my favorite song from this project is So What You Saying. I can't chest them to break chest men. Master 120 lessons is my profession. So get the stepping. A catch lead like Zeppelin. The other project Jay released in 2007 was Act 1, Eternal Sunshine, where Jay raps over the score to the movie Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Asiatic black man from Zion, catch a quad supreme, letting off steam, diamethyl trip to me, make a man dream. Jay Electronica released this mixtape on MySpace in 2007, and it ended up being downloaded over 50,000 times within the first month it was up. Now, as some of you may know, Act 1 is only one part of a rumored trilogy. You obviously have Act 1, Eternal Sunshine, The Pledge, then we now have Act 2, The Patents of Nobility, The Turn. The trilogy is supposed to be capped off with Act 3, The Last Will and Testament of Timothy El Padero Thedford, The Prestige. This is only rumored though. If you have not caught on by now, I think it's pretty obvious Jay Electronica is a huge film nut and these acts are inspired by the explanations of the stages of a magic trick from the 2006 movie, The Prestige. Every great magic trick consists of three parts or acts. The first part is called the prestige. The magician shows you something ordinary, a deck of cards, a bird, or a man. He shows you this object. Perhaps he asks you to inspect it to see if it is indeed real, unaltered, normal. But of course, it probably isn't. 
The second act is called the turn. The magician takes the ordinary something and makes it do something extraordinary. Now you're looking for the secret, but you won't find it because of course, you're not really looking. You don't really want to know. You want to be fooled, but you wouldn't clap yet because making something disappear isn't enough. You have to bring it back. That's why every magic trick has a third act, the hardest part, the part we call the prestige. Act 1, Eternal Sunshine, The Pledge, was essentially J Electronica's big break. In 2008, the year after its release, proved to be a calm before the storm with the release of two projects, Scratching Demos Tape Volume 1 and Star Wars Attack of the Clones. I believe Star Wars Attack of the Clones is an unofficial project, and to the disappointment of a few people, I will not go too far in depth about the unofficial projects of J Electronica. But this year, J Electronica also joined the Rock the Bells tour, which was headlined by the likes of A Tribe Called Quest, Nas, Mos Def, and more. Speaking of Nas, J Electronica produced the first track, Queens Get the Money, from Nas's 2008 untitled album. Nas once talked about how he originally wanted J Electronica to produce all of his 2008 album, but as we know, this never came to be. Also in 2008, Just Blaze and J Electronica collaborated on a track titled Exhibit A Transformations, which appeared on the project Fresh Cuts Volume 3, which contained the song. Jay once spoke about how the song came about during a Red Bull Music Academy lecture in 2010. He revealed that there were plans for a whole project of Exhibit songs, but this never came to be. He also spoke on Exhibit B, which is essentially a remix of Exhibit A with Mo's death. During his Red Bull lecture, Jay revealed that the real Exhibit B was on a hard drive and hasn't ever been heard. There have been rumors that J Electronica and Mo's Def were working on a collab project titled Sympathico, but after all of these years, it has yet to officially release. This is not the only collab album from Jay that has been teased. He's had plenty of collab projects that have never came to fruition. The DOC, Lil Wayne, Ninth Wonder, and Lil B are some of the people who at one point in time planned to make a collab project with Jay, but as we know, these never came to be released. 2009 would come around and this ended up being Jay's huge breakout year. Multiple events occurred this year, with the big one being that Erica Badu gave birth to his daughter. Also, a quick side note is that sometime in 2008, or 2009, Jay Electronica started working with Deacon Records under a one album deal. The co-founders of the label, Peter Bittenbender and Jason Goldwatch ended up traveling to Nepal to shoot a documentary with Jay Electronica. The trailer for the documentary is online and Peter Bittenbender has described the footage as unlike anything ever seen from a musician, let alone a hip hop artist. Allegedly, some of the footage contains Jay Electronica participating in a burial ceremony, Jay conversing with Buddhist monks in a high temple about the meaning of the universe, and Jay rapping at the base of Mount Everest. The film was cut into a 90 minute feature from over 40 hours of footage, but even to this day, the feature, unsurprisingly, has never been released. But to skip ahead a bit, and I mean throughout the years, the film has been teased, and finally in February of 2021, Goldwatch posted a 4 minute and 44 second clip of the documentary to his Instagram, so maybe there is still some hope about it actually coming out one day. But going back to 2009, and this is the year that J Electronica released Exhibit C. The song chronicles Jay's path to greatness and plays out like a court case where Just Blaze states that the song is a hearing of the state of hip-hop 
versus J. Electronica. Exhibit C was supposed to be proof that hip hop was indeed alive and well. The song became an instant classic and is what built J. Electronica up to mythical like status. He was slated to be the next big thing in hip hop back then off of the strength of this record alone. The story behind the song is actually really interesting. One night, Just Blaze and Jay Electronica were just hanging out at the studio, and at the time, Angela Yee had a morning show called The Morning After, and Jay had the idea of making a record and taking it to Angela Yee. While Just Blaze was making the record, he knew that he was coming up with something special. Jay Electronica came up with four or five lines at a time, and Just Blaze threw a couple of lines at him or told him to change a line or change the pronunciation of a line. This is why you hear Just Blaze talking on the record, and when you hear him say, Oh my God, keep going, that was actually real because Jay was going to end the song after his second verse. This then led to Jay's legendary third verse. Just Blaze on the outro of the track admits that they did the record without even trying and was still better than a lot of people's records. He then tells Jay Electronica that he should get Puffy to do this over, but we'll get to Diddy later. But the song Exhibit C blew up big time and a massive bidding war over J Electronica ensued. There have been interviews from back in the day where J Elect was talking about being independent and not seeing himself being an artist on the roster of a label and things of that nature, but as we all know, his stance on that changed. This is because in 2010, J Electronica signed with Rock Nation, which was founded by rap icon Jay Z. J Electronica was impressed by Jay Z because in Jay Z's second email reply to him, he attached a recorded verse for a feature to show how serious he was about signing him. People in the know about Jay Z know that he rarely hops on songs and does features with upcoming artists especially back then. He would rather wait until they established themselves a little more so his feature on their track could be a bigger deal. The verse that Jay-Z sent him ended up being on the song Shiny Suit Theory, which was officially released in November of 2010. I'm in touch with every shrine from Japan to Oaxaca, the melanated, carbon dated, phantom of the chakras. Earlier, I mentioned that we would get to Diddy later, and well, Diddy was allegedly pissed off that J Electronica did not sign to him. Diddy tweeted out some now deleted tweets about the situation, and as we know, Diddy had a chance to sign J Electronica back in the day, but you know, things happened. J Electronica also mentions Diddy on Shiny Suit Theory, as we know, but they ended up patching things between them after those tweets. Also, while we're on 2010 as a topic, this is when J Electronica started appearing in Mountain Dew ads. Now the next part of the video is going to be different than how I usually do it. Normally I go chronologically by year, but in this case, describing all of the events that took place in 10 years would take all day, so I'm condensing it into the most important stuff from those years. Act 2 was originally supposed to come out in 2011, but then as we know, that never materialized and it was teased so many times throughout the years, it was insane. He at one point revealed a track list of the album and other people close to him did interviews and were questioned and said that it was coming out, but Jay moves at his own pace. Throughout the years, J Electronica did release the occasional song or batch of songs. Songs like The Curse of Mayweather, Letter to Fallon, Better in Tune with the Infinite, Road to Perdition, and Dear Moleskin. Road to Perdition is my favorite song that he's a leading artist on that was released during the wait for his debut album. Of course, Road to Perdition is a reference to the 2002 film of the same name. Got that black on black skin tone, actual fact syndrome, that's why I dropped the jewel in every verse you heard me shit on. Okay. Throughout the years leading up to his debut album, Jay also featured on numerous songs by appearing on songs like Big Sean's infamous song Control. He also featured on songs like Hard to Face Reality, Suplexes Inside of Complexes and Duplexes, Kingdom Remix, and How Great. Personally, I think that his verse on the We Made It Freestyle is something of note as well. 
God probably should ban styling on the record. Lost sons of Muhammad, we wildin' on the record. The shad do a lad and the hat is the message. Many different things could have potentially taken J. Electronica off of his path from becoming the next big thing in rap, but the main thing that people point to was his affair with Kate Rothschild. She's an heiress of the Rothschild banking dynasty. The Rothschild family is like a conspiracy theorist heaven because there are so many rumors about that family being tied to nefarious things like the Illuminati, for example. You guys can really dig down that rabbit hole by yourself, but essentially the point that I'm trying to make is that Jay was having an affair with a girl from one of the richest and most powerful families in the world. A family that's worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Kate Rothschild had an affair with Jay while she was still married. It's still crazy that a man from the Magnolia Projects managed to pull that off, but this is definitely one of the things that distracted Jay Electronica. Another thing that came to light that also took him off of his path was his drug abuse. In 2014, in an interview, Jay admitted that drug use derailed his music career for a while. I backslid for a while. I got into drugging and drinking and smoking, but now I'm back reformed. All praises due to Allah. I just wanted to come out today clean, sober, and with my family, taking control of my life and taking control of the game. All of the things I just mentioned played a huge part in the delay of his debut album and it significantly hurt the hype around him. Like I said, Act 2 had plans to originally release all the way back in 2011, but Jay Electronica would not drop an album until 9 years later. But throughout that wait, Jay constantly teased an album which caused fans to grow angry due to constantly being led on. You also have to remember that Jay was a signed artist to Rock Nation and part of his deal was to release an album. It's practically unheard of for someone to do what Jay Electronica did by not dropping and fulfilling his obligations for years. It's even crazier that in interviews, Jay Electronica has said that Jay-Z knew better than to ask him about the album because it would cause bad blood. Now that I think about it, if Jay Electronica signed to Bad Boy, Diddy is not waiting 10 years for that man to drop a debut album. He is not going for that. <laughs> I literally just thought about that, but that is too funny. But also throughout these years, Jay Electronica got into it with multiple people. Trinidad James, Eminem, 50 Cent, etc. On Periscope in 2016, he even sent shots at Kendrick Lamar, calling him his son and that Kendrick wishes that he could be him. I can also remember Joe Budden and Pete Rock talking about Jay's failure to release a debut album back then. But this all leads us to February of 2020. Out of all of the years that Jay could have dropped an album, he waited until the world was about to be in a pandemic, which is <laughs> too crazy timing. But in February of 2020, Jay Electronica claimed that his debut album would finally be released in 40 days of his announcement date, making it March when it was scheduled to be dropped. People just kind of shook it off as being nonsense because once again, it had been years and people were sick and tired of the BS, but as the days went on, things seemed to get more real. Finally, Jay Electronica dropped his highly anticipated, long-awaited debut album, but it was not Act 2. This project instead would be titled A Written Testimony. This peaked at number 12 on the Billboard 200 with over 31,000 albums sold in its first week. Despite the agonizing wait, the album received really good reviews from both fans and critics. Definitely not a 10 year wait good, but for what the album is, it is great. My favorite song from it without a doubt is Universal Soldier. The son of slaves who I started out as a peasant. Uh -huh. That's why I built my temple like Solomon in the desert. Uh -huh. Perhaps the funniest thing that came out from this album was people calling it Watch the Throne 2 due to Jay-Z's presence throughout the album. Of course, Watch the Throne is a collab album between Kanye and Jay-Z. Jay-Z appeared in 8 out of the 10 songs on a written testimony, and not that it was bad or anything, but that's why people said that regarding the album. 
a written testimony did end up getting nominated for a Grammy, but it lost to Nas's King's Disease album with Nas finally winning his first Grammy. After a written testimony though, J Electronica fans did not know what was next. They waited nearly 10 years for an album, so they wondered when they would get more music. Well, in early October of 2020, there were rumors of Act 2, Patents of Nobility, being leaked online in full. Just a couple of days after this, the album leaked almost a decade after its original release date. Shortly after the album leaked, J Electronica went to Twitter to thank his fans for the warm response he was receiving from the project. I vividly remember when this was happening and could not believe it. I thought that it was all a joke, but then I found out that it was real and I almost lost my mind. I listened to it all the way through multiple times and loved the project. That project right there is a masterpiece and what's crazy is that it's not even finished. I know that the project was once on title, but I don't think that it is on there anymore. I could be wrong, but if you have not heard I2 yet, go listen to it. Phenomenal project and it makes you wonder what could have been if J Electronica finished this album and released it in the early 2010s. His career could have turned out differently and maybe rap history would have slightly been different, we'll truly never know. Life on Mars is the standout song to me from this project. Stand me though, I'm cold like New York, my heart is warm like Miami. I'm just trying to build a kingdom for my people and my family. Bun B of the legendary rap duo UGK recently did an interview where he talked about J Electronica playing him an entire album in 2011. About his experience, Bun B said that the album was the greatest music that he had ever heard. One can assume that Jay potentially played him at two since that was supposed to come out that year, but this is merely an assumption. Jay Electronica could have played something completely different, but given the time, it might be safe to say that it was actually at two. But since the leaking of Act 2, J Electronica has yet to release another project. Since then, he's done three notable features that I would like to discuss. In 2021, J Electronica featured on the song Jesus Lord for Kanye's Donda album. The second one is his feature on Westside Gun song Free Cutter from Side B of his 2021 album Hitler Wears Hermes 8. I bring up this feature because Westside Gun founded Griselda Records and once teased J Electronica signing to the label back in 2022. The last feature that I wanted to talk about is Jay's feature on No Name Song Balloons. Upon its release, the song received backlash due to Jay Electronica's verse being deemed anti-Semitic. This wasn't new because the song Ghost of Soldier Slim from a written testimony sparked controversy due to his line about synagogues in the song. But now we'll talk about J Electronica's supposed next album. In 2023, J Electronica took to social media to tease a new album potentially titled Bismillah Boys, which is a phrase in Arabic meaning in the name of God. He captioned the post album time and tagged more than 100 prominent figures in music, entertainment, and sports. The snippet that Jay previewed is really good, I must say. It's assumed that the song that I'm about to preview is titled Leaflets. Leaflets samples the popular vacation song, Young. In February of this year, Hitboy, who was one of the many people that Jay tagged in the initial post regarding his new album, previewed a song with Jay and Westside Gun on social media. In the post, he said that he produced it and Jay Electronica just texted him and said that this was going to be the intro for his new album. Butterflies for the believers, the heart is the target, the eardrum is the receiver. My pen twirl on the red carpet just like a diva. Man, I'm saying it now, if the album sounds anything like Leaflets and this track with Westside Gun, it might be a classic for sure. It does make you wonder though, if Act 3 will ever be a thing. Uh, 
J. Electronica has a very confusing legacy. For a time, he seemed more like a myth instead of an actual person. At a point, he was being propped up to be the savior of hip hop. But after all that hype that was built, he did not manage to release an album for nearly a decade. There's a lot of mixed opinions on J. Electronica. There are some people that feel like he's a disappointment and a waste of talent, while others believe that he's very skilled and on a different time than other artists. Personally, I can see both sides of the argument, but not dropping an album for a decade is purely inexcusable regardless if it is good or not. I'm a firm believer in believing that things happen for a reason. Maybe he's complacent and content with his career and where he's at now. I don't think that he's a failure because he did manage to persevere in his life by making it out of the Magnolia projects, battling through his addictions, and overcoming homelessness along with other things to get to where he's at now. Did J. Electronica fail to live up to the hype? I mean, honestly, that's up to whoever is answering the question. Obviously, the big knock on him is his lack of a discography, especially since he only has one official album with that being a written testimony. Act 2 was leaked and wasn't even complete yet, though what we got was still a masterpiece in my opinion. Hopefully, this new album that J. has been teasing actually releases sometime this year. No promises, though. All in all, let me know what you guys thought of the video in the comment section below. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.